Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Maricola, fantasy artist and illustrator, and welcome to my Muddy Colors Art Tip of the Month. If you're preparing your own painting surfaces, then you are likely using gesso as a ground. Now, I'm sure, like me, you like to have a nice, smooth painting surface to work on. And that's pretty easy to do since gesso tends to settle and smooth itself out across the surface as it dries. But what if you want that gesso to retain its brush strokes? I'm going to share with you a few tips on how to achieve that. Gesso varies by manufacturer. Some will be thin and some will be thick. Now, if you want your gesso to hold brush strokes, thicker is better. So if you have thin gesso, pour some into an open container and let it sit uncovered for a period of time so it can thicken. Now let it sit long enough to become the consistency of oatmeal, not thin like milk. Now I happen to have here a, a pre-gessoed sheet of uh, masonite or gesso board. Okay, so this was pre-gessoed. I bought it from the store like this and you know, it's, it's really nice because it's consistent uh, gesso painted surface, but it's a little too smooth for my taste and I wanna add some texture and uh, so I can see some brush strokes in that gesso. Put some gesso down and I use a foam brush to spread the gesso out. I've got my gesso on my surface here and it is really caked on there. It looks like I've just frosted a wedding cake. If I leave it like this, that is going to settle it's not going to obviously settle to go back perfectly smooth, um, but it's not going to retain all of those brush strokes that uh, I really want to be there. So I have two other things available to you that you can use to prop your painting on and let your painting dry upside down. Now, if you let your board dry upside down, then gravity is going to pull the gesso this way down toward the ground uh, and therefore you're going to retain more of those brush strokes than you normally would uh, if it were the other way. Now if you want to make sure that those brush strokes stand out even more then you've got to speed up the drying time of the gesso and a good way to do that is with a hair dryer. All right. The important thing though is that you've got to make sure your hair dryer is on the lowest setting and the hottest setting. If it's, if it's too high, then when you're uh, using the hair dryer, you, you might move some of that gesso around and you don't want to move it around. You want it to dry in place. After I use the blow dryer a little bit uh, and left this sitting here for maybe an hour or so, um, I turn this over and you can see that it still has all those wonderful brush strokes and that uh, all those lines from all that uh, real thick buildup of the gesso that uh, would have flattened out had I uh, not turned it upside down, had I left it right side up, and had I also not used the uh, blow dryer. All right, so using that uh, method that I just showed you is a great way to add texture using gesso over your entire surface. But if what if you don't want to uh, have the texture over the entire surface? What if you want to kind of control those brush strokes a little bit more? It would be really cool, I thought, since I've got this this moon, this circle behind the figure. It'd be great to have some texture in this piece, like concentric circles, kind of following the curve of this moon. I'm gonna use the gesso that I left sitting out so that I could uh, thicken up a little bit. Brushing in a, this direction around the moon. I don't want just these tiny brush strokes, but I'd want uh, you know, a little bit a little bit more texture, kind of lines moving uh, in this direction. I'll show you a little trick I, I uh, do using some brushes here. So in this case, I'm just using four brushes and I wanna get them all next to each other and all lined up. I'll just use the edge of my masonite to uh, line up those brushes. And then I wanna tape all those brushes together. I can lift those brushes and tuck the tape underneath. 
So this is what I've got. I've got my four brushes taped together. Again, I'll just, let me just lay down a little bit more uh, gesso. And now I can use my, my rake that I created and uh, just kind of rake through the, the gesso. So I continue working my way around the piece, applying the thickened gesso and using the rake tool that I created to carve those lines and then locking everything in place with the hair dryer. All right, to recap, you want to use thicker gesso. So if yours is thin, make sure you leave it out so it can thicken up and store your painting surface upside down and let gravity do some of the work for you and use a hair dryer to speed up the drying time of that gesso. Now also, if you use tools to carve into your gesso to create textures, make sure you use that hair dryer to lock those brush strokes in place. So I hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.